Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Technical Indicators Show. In this video, we're looking at the Relative Strength Index. Who is it created by? Well, 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 it's Wells Wilder. The infamous WW that ASAC Trader was after for all that time. I'd certainly knock that door. It's an indicator from Wilder's book, New Concepts in Technical Trading Systems, set loose on the world in 1978. It appears as a momentum oscillator with a single line that oscillates in a set range from 0 to 100. In its traditional form, it's trying to find out if an asset is overbought or or oversold. If there's say too much buying going on in the market, then the RSI will have wanted to have figured that out so that it can signal to you that the momentum is too hot and the reversal could be due. It's tempting you into a sell trade in that instance. And then naturally it is the same but in the reverse gif when there's a lot of selling occurring and the RSI value is dropping really low. The standard interpretation at that stage is to say that the markets may have become oversold and the reversal of price to the upside could be due to come. Whilst Wilder intended for the indicator to be used with 40 periods as its default look back so that's what you'll find on most platforms let's check out that formula here it is wrapped in glory in the calculation the rsi takes the number 100 and divides it by one plus the relative strength it then takes that figure and subtracts it from 100 understood then no obviously this hinges on that mystery term right there the rs relative strength what is relative strength it's the average gain divided by the average loss down the rabbit hole we go even worse we have to calculate the first period differently differently to the subsequent periods. For the first period, to work out the average gain, you add together the price gains from each of the periods in your look back where the price went up, and then divide that total by the number of periods. So for example, if you're using the default 14 periods in your RSI, and in six of those periods the price of the asset increased, then you would add together the price increase amounts from each of those six periods, and divide that total by 14. Just the opposite then for your average loss, you add together the loss of price for each of the periods where price went down and then divide that figure by the number of periods. So continuing our example, that would be the losses in price for the remaining eight periods totaled up and divided again by 14. Then you can divide that average gain by the average loss and you've got your relative strength for the first period. Once we've got that, then as we said, the subsequent periods are calculated differently. For the meaning of gain, this time it's the previous average gain multiplied by the number of periods you're using less one. And then if there was any gain in price for the current period, you add that on, which is effectively making up for that minus one in the formula. Finally, you can then divide your figure by the total number of periods. Likewise, on the loss side of things, it means the previous average loss multiplied by the number of periods in your indicator less one plus any current loss in price there may have been in the latest period, and then divide that figure by the total number of periods. That is, of course, quite complicated in this brief video, but for now we can work back from that and remind ourselves that whether it's for the first or the subsequent periods, the relative strength is that average gain figure divided by the average loss figure. Finally, that relative strength figure is then popped back into the RSI formula, which allows the indicator to oscillate between the values of 0 and 100. And just as advertised, a single line oscillator reveals itself from the cocoon that is the formula. Those grey lines there are the levels that the traditional conformists would say indicate if the market is overbought or oversold. They're the Wells Wilder default levels of 70 and 30, which will likely be how they're set up by default on your platform. And if you are on a justice driven trading platform you should get the option of what part of the price you would like the indicator to apply to like with most indicators i tend to avoid the high and the low particularly with something like the rsi if you're using overbought and oversold signals you probably don't want to get dragged into those trades where you're smashing in for reversals just because price temporarily swung into the overbought or oversold territory now we know where we stand with all that let's take a look at some of the entry signals that we can get from the rsi as we've just mentioned wilder did set the default level levels of overbought and oversold to be at 70.30 and he was mostly found on the daily time frame. A reading above 70 would indicate the asset was overbought and that a reverse was due, or likewise the asset could be considered oversold if it had a reading below 30. It does have to be said that these basic signals have been widely disregarded amongst modern traders as not being consistent enough to earn profit from. There are a handful of true believers that do still exist, but I don't know if anyone can remember a time they've heard someone talking about the RSI and saying yeah, I use those Wilder 7030 levels all the time for my main entry signals and I'm making all that money. Maybe if you work in some new age scam call center, you hear those type of sentences all day long, but for most everybody else, it just doesn't happen. Using those signals for more than a minute generally shows traders that they are not going to enjoy those levels with consistency. So sadly, you don't get on the podium anymore for having thought to yourself that these levels are mostly outdated and garbage as a sole signal. So what else can we do? 
Here comes a creative thought. Why don't we stretch those levels from 70-30 to instead be at 80-20 just to try and help remove some of those false signals we'll get. You're basically chasing reversals anyway and they're very difficult to catch on to so you may want to presume with a greater confidence that an asset is overbought or oversold. Here's a comparison of a 70-30 and an 80-20. If you are using the 80-20 you can see that it does keep you out of a couple awkward moves over here but even at 80-20 markets can stay overbought or oversold for long periods of time. Or they may reverse but not long enough for you to catch profits before you realize that it is but a retracement on a larger trend. Okay, next approach. What about changing the inputs to something shorter or longer? Here's a 5 period RSI in aqua above a 50 period RSI in orange. We've got those wilder 70-30 levels in play again and you can see how the 5 period is giving you signals left, right and center there. Whereas the 50 period barely gives you a signal at all. It's going to be false signal city on the 5 period and a slight improvement on that. No trading at all all on the 50 period. So if you are going for overbought oversold signals then you're probably best not drifting too far from between 10 and 20 periods input. Having said that there's always some creative type like Larry LC Connors who used a strategy based around a two period RSI with the overbought and oversold levels set at the extreme points of 90 and 10. Again it's a sell trade when it's overbought above 90 or a buy trade if it's oversold below 10. This is for purely short term trades and isn't going to gift you a full trends worth of a trade. But if you are and I need cash right now type of character then stick this strategy on the one minute chart throw in just a smidge of your own personal gumption and then you're away as a successful fulfilled entrepreneur whether you like this two period approach or not the strategy does highlight the diversity in use when it comes to those overbought and oversold signals that can come out of the rsi something else that may prove helpful is to look back at the previous data of the asset that you're wanting to trade on it may be that the rsi rarely ever goes above 70 or below 30 instead staying in a shallower range on the particular time frame you're using. Without checking that first you could end up sitting and waiting for days, weeks, months, years, all the way to death without ever taking a signal, not one. So do be aware of your trading environment. And anyway, who needs to use a momentum indicator for overbought or oversold signals when we can jump on board with that momentum and get into a trend? For example, you could enter a buy trade when the RSI moves above 60 or enter a sell trade if it goes below 40. This way you're a part of the move that happens on the way to the asset becoming overbought or oversold. Another method is using the 50 line straight down the center as a filter for your other entry indicators. So if the RSI is giving you a reading above 50, then you could say only enter buy trades. Or if it's below 50 in that instance, then you'd only enter sell trades. There are other specific systems as well with the RSI, such as the one designed by technical analyst Constance Brown. She used the trend ID system with the RSI, where in a bullish market, it would have a support point around 40 to 50, an overbought signal up towards the 90 level. Likewise, in a bearish market, the RSI will be oversold around the 10 value with a resistance level in that 50 to 60 zone. Now these signals don't differ so much from the default strategy of overbought and oversold but they do account for the prevailing winds of the overall market direction and give you a bit more to work with. There's always our old pal divergence as well. This is where price is headed in one direction but the oscillator isn't quite in agreement with that. Like with most divergence this can be split into bullish or bearish divergence. Bullish divergence is when the RSI goes to an oversold signal and then when price continues to find a lower low the rsi value instead makes a higher low here you can see in the example those yellow rings there highlight where the indicator and price both went in tandem to lower lows and into the overbought territory for the rsi but here with our aqua colored rings we see where price has dropped to a slightly lower low yet the rsi indicator wasn't convinced that time and instead printed a higher low this could be interpreted as a reversal being due and a buy signal being the answer to your question of profitability if you took the signal in this scenario then the price did move up for a few periods however it quickly went into a range so you wouldn't have got much profit off of it i mean not you you would be able to take all the profits of course but everybody else that's listening they would struggle bearish divergence dead opposite here the price finds new highs after an overbought signal but there is a lower high reading coming from the rsi so in the example we see where the rsi just dips into overbought territory as the price reaches a higher high at the same time then the price continues to move up a little however the rsi doesn't breach the overbought line this time so it makes a lower high which is telling you to enter a sell trade in this particular case you may have been able to take some profits off that signal on the whole divergence it can be a bit tricky to spot if you're not actively looking for it and it's even harder to successfully trade it for consistent profits it's still looking at reversals just like the default signals do so it's not jumping into new territory there but it can potentially add an extra layer of confirmation to an entry carrying on to our money management now we could also use those levels of the rsi for getting out of trades either the good way by taking profit 
or the normal way for most of my trades, which is via the stop loss. So for example, if you took that traditional sell signal at the overbought level of 70, then you could say that if the RSI value gets to 50, I'll take profit. But if it climbs further to say 75 or 80, that's where I'll cut my losses and get out of the trade. Using those levels can work for trend trades that you're trying to get onto as well. So if say you did enter a buy trade when the RSI hits 60, then you could stop your loss if the RSI came back down to 50 or take profits if it rose to 70 or 80, those overbought levels. Now chances are that you are going to have a better money management indicator than the RSI. But these are just a couple examples to show you how you could fall back on these as an extra layer of confirmation to get out of the trade if you wanted to. They're signals that show you the original entry that you went into has now gone against you give them a try and see what happens why not once you do get into the markets you'll find for the default overbought oversold rsi signals that something like stocks as an asset might prove more effective to trade on than something like forex or cryptocurrencies this is particularly the case in those smaller or mid cap stocks where you get a lot of buying in off particular news that breaks maybe they've beaten their expected results and we see candlestick patterns form such as the bull flag or the bear flag pattern where a lot of traders may very well be using those rsi overbought oversold sold levels to determine where they're going to take profit or stop their loss. The level of power which can hit a stock is going to be much more than what can hit a particular currency pair or even something like gold because the impact of the big moves on those markets is just much more diluted than it is with stocks. But if you were using the momentum aspect of the indicator to just try and jump onto a trend or as purely a filter for the overall market direction then it's usable across all markets equally. So if you are on say a forex currency pair and your strategy is that if the RSI moves up and hits 55 then you're going to enter a buy trade that kind of signal will be about as consistent or inconsistent across all markets i'll just throw in a casual reminder that nothing is ever guaranteed in trading for similar indicators as the rsi is an oscillator looking at overbought and oversold areas we do have a few prominent examples which we can compare it to they are the stochastics the commodity channel index and the williams percent range by default all three of these indicators are trying to tell you through the momentum whether an asset has become overheated or overcooled and that some form reversal is therefore due. Let's just attack your eyes for a moment by showing you all of those three indicators plus the RSI in ladder form with their default levels applied. We've got the RSI at the top there, stochastics in the upper middle, commodity channel index in the lower middle, and the Williams percent range at the bottom. Although these aren't giving you identical readings and signals, I do think in a lot of areas there's a very clear overall pattern showed by all of them. If you are using one of these then it comes down to how you would tweak their settings in your particular strategy to give you an edge. Because because I would say just taking the basic signals from them using one over the other isn't going to change your life. In conclusion, for the RSI, it doesn't have to be the 70-30 levels of default interpretation. We've come a long way since Wilder 78, and it's amazing to hear I know that it doesn't even have to be overbought or oversold signals at all. Do feel free to try it out in a non-conformist method by leveraging that momentum to try and help you find a trend, or as an exit indicator to try and get you out of a trend in a timely fashion. There's a lot of ways that traders use the RSI across markets, so think old school, think new school, put it all together to make a top-tier macho man endorsed trading strategy. Strategy. Oh yeah, great combo, great combo. And that is it for the RSI, but there is more information and links in the video description if that's what you're into. Nothing wrong with that if you are. And do consider how every single chart in this video has been specifically pre-selected by me for showing you how the indicator may or may not work. The gains do always appear closer than they actually are, but I have used this indicator in live forward testing strategies and will also link those videos in the description. This is Project Trade and we are the Bernie Madoff Tribute Fund. Thank you for watching.